James Grime is a mathematician, lecturer and public speaker. He has a PhD in mathematics and his academic interests include group theory, the mathematics of symmetry, and also has a keen interest in cryptography. He brought with him an Enigma machine, a three-rotor cipher machine used by the Germans during the Second World War to encrypt messages. We asked him a few questions. Oh, well, so, uh... Can you explain how the Enigma machine actually works? Yeah, sure, I can explain. So the machine, I don't think the Enigma is that difficult, really. If you think about it in the right way, all we've got here is batteries and lights. It's very old-fashioned technology. So there is a battery inside the machine. So when I press a button, you can see a battery there. When I press a button, that battery will go through all the wires which are inside this machine and connect to a light and it turns on. It's quite easy, really. But the clever part, I press that button again, this rotor here, which is a wheel, will move and all the, wheel, all the wires that are inside are going to get turned one place forwards and that means the uh, button will connect to a different light. So let's try that. I'm going to press it. This wheel will turn. Yeah, now we get a different light turning on, so it changes the code as well. All right. Um how important is the reflector on connecting the rotors for encryption and decryption? Oh, the reflector. Yeah, a lot of people don't talk about the reflector. So, yeah, inside the machine we have these three wheels, those are the rotors, and then we have a reflector. What the reflector does is your signal goes through the wheels, it actually then loops back, comes backwards through the machine. That's really important because that part, uh, the reflector, makes pairs of letters. So 26 letters become 13 pairs. Now that's important because it's sandwiched in the middle. The whole machine makes 13 pairs. And that's how you can code and decode. So if I press the letter, I might do it now. Uh, if I press K, let's get it to work. Okay, K has become A. But if I press A, it will become K as well because those are paired up. And that's how you can code and decode. Right. Um, how many combinations are there? Lots, yeah, there's lots of combinations. So all together, there's lots of things you can do. You, you can change the wheels, you can actually change the order. There's five wheels to pick from. Uh, they've got different positions. We have wires at the front you can change. The number of combinations is 159 million, million, million combinations. Wow. It's a huge amount. You can't check all those combinations. So why was it so hard to crack? Right, so there's two reasons why it's difficult to break. One, because it has lots of combinations that you can't check, because there's too many. And the other reason it's difficult to crack is because of its changing code. Because, it, because I keep pressing a letter like K, it will keep changing the code as I type because of those moving parts. So those two reasons are what make it difficult to break. Um, now, you, now you may know that the, in 1944, the, the Luftwaffe introduced um, the, uh, the, the plug port switch. Yes. Which, which attached it. Um, replacing the standard set of cables. How did this um, help to further encrypt messages? So this is going to make it more difficult to break. So you've got the plug board up front. So the plug board up front connects a letter to another. There's a huge number of combinations for this. But uh, with the more advanced models, you can start to reprogram them as well. Uh, but that was near the end of the war. Most of the time, you had this standard model. Um, now how important was the capture of a working Enigma by British sailors on the U-boat U-559 to warp it in terms of um, um, decrypting codes, bearing in mind that the Polish had already... Um, yeah, absolutely right. You said the right thing there. So you said the Polish had already done it, surely. Uh, you're right. Uh, what the Polish were able to do, and I love this story, is they were able to work out how Enigma worked without having to steal the Enigma machine. Just from maths and being clever, they were able to work out the wiring, how it worked inside, without stealing the Enigma machine. So we knew this. This was not the mystery. So when people say we stole them from submarines, it doesn't matter, because we already know how it works. What was important is we stole the instruction books as well. That's what we needed. So we had the instruction books and we had the machine. Um. Uh, now, now, you may know the Swiss Enigma machine was instituted by the Swiss as a replacement for the Enigma machine, the Enigma K, I believe. Um, however, do you see that as an, as a, as a new, an Enigma derivative, um, taking into consideration that the internal ciphering functions are not mathematically identical to that of the Enigma? Okay, so yeah, there were a few different types of cipher machines around at the time. Some of them are like Enigma because they were stolen, really. They basically stole the idea from Enigma. 
Uh, some of them were different, yeah. So there were some harder codes that were different. Underneath, some of the fundamental principles are actually the same. Sometimes they're made in different ways. Uh, some are harder than others. Uh, Enigma was one of the best machines going around, but it was a bit old-fashioned in the 1940s, even, even in the war. Uh, so there were other machines that were improvements. So it is an evolution. Right. Um, how did um, German procedural flaws and operating mistakes um, enable Allied the cryptologists to succeed in turn time? Yeah, yeah, there are some human errors that help you break this code. Uh, for example, uh, at the top of the machine, we have three little windows here, uh, which shows you the setting for the machine. And that should be a random setting. Uh, but it is, it is possible that some of the operators started using little short words instead of a random setting. Uh, in fact, what they used to do is they had three letters in plain so that they could send three letters in code, so the six letters at the beginning of the message. So they would pick six letter words and the first three letters are in plain, which means you could guess the secret setting. Uh, they would use words like Berlin, London. Um, how does a fourth broker on the, on the Navy version um, help to create even more difficult to crack um, messages? Yeah, it was more difficult. So the, the submarines, the German submarines, uh, used to have three rotors like this one. This is an army machine. Uh, then they added a fourth rotor. Uh, that did make it more difficult. It gives you more settings. So there's more things to check. Um, it's not as difficult as it could be. The fourth rotor wasn't interchangeable with the others. It was actually a different size, slightly thinner. Oh. So it, only, it was only 26 times harder. Oh, so only 26 okay. times harder. Um, um, how many uh, different uh, Enigma models were there? Uh, yeah, there was a few different types of Enigma. Um, so this is called an Enigma I. Uh, that's, that's the model of this. That's the military version. That's the famous version. Uh, there was you know, Enigma A, Enigma B, C, K, D. Yeah, there's all different. Yeah, all sorts of different types of models. Some of them were built for businesses. For banks. Yeah, for banks, and some were built for the military. Uh, and so the military version is the famous one, which is what I've got here. Uh, but there's a commercial version, businesses, yeah, that's a different version. Uh, thank you for being with us today, and um, if you'd like to watch more videos, um, please do subscribe. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.